Welcome to Sunny's, the car wash factory. In conjunction with this training video, please reference each component's owner's manual, available at sunnysdirect.com, before performing any installation, repair, or maintenance procedure. Each manual details specific requirements and settings necessary for the safe operation and maintenance of your car wash equipment. Hey, I'm Anthony Annaletta from Sunny's The Car Wash Factory. Today we're doing some uh, maintenance videos and some operational videos. And this is a new piece of equipment that we designed that I think is very important that I think a lot of people were, are dying to have and we've sold quite a few of them already. But we're at this new car wash and we've also installed our truck bed concierge. We call it the truck bed concierge because that's what the focus is on. We've got a sonar sensor at the very beginning of the tunnel that's profiling the vehicle as it goes through. And once we detect that it is a truck bed and an open truck bed at that, then we actually can activate some relays and, and stop items from flowing, whether it's lava, hot wax, um, triple foam in the tunnel operation. Uh, we can shut them off after they go over the cab and the back and, and not fill up the truck bed. At the same token, with our air gators, we can actually close our gates as we get to the truck bed so we don't blow any foam or water onto the next car right behind us. And also on our top brushes. Everybody wants to keep the top brush up out of the pickup truck bed. So we're doing that as well. So we can actually wipe the hood, the nose, the windshield, and the roof of the truck, and then retract up there before it goes into the bed. Uh, very little complicated program to make that work with one, um, with one sonar sensor, but our engineers are fantastic at the factory. Inside here, it comes uh, pretty much ready to wire. Uh, needs a couple of connections. On the bottom left here, it gets its power. 110 volts, constant power from a supply within the equipment room. Down on this one here, our orange section would be our, um, our pulse switch that's coming from our, our computer, our controller. We also have a conveyor start signal, which comes from our controller. We've got our neutrals there as well. Then on this section here, we're wiring up our sonar sensor so we can get the profiling in here, and that comes in. The next we have is we have the ability to fire six different relays. Real simple the way this works. We take the wire coming from the computer that's gonna activate the lava pumps or the hot wax pumps or uh, the waterfall or our gators or our top brushes retract. And we actually bring that wire here first and we go through a normally closed contact on this relay. And then we go back uh, through the motor control center and land where we would tie it into our solenoid valve. What happens is this is a normally closed contact. On all the regular cars, it's gonna come, the power's gonna come back, pass through that relay, go up to the solenoid valve and make it work as normal. If we de detect that it is a truck, all we're going to do is open this relay when we know the truck bed's there. So now whatever service is on and trying to go in that truck bed, we're going to open that circuit, we're going to retract it up, we're going to shut it off, and we're going to close the gate, and we're going to make that a real simple operation. There's some pro programming that needs to be done after this is set up, and I'll go walk through some of the screens for you right now. Up here, we've got our main screen. When we touch our retract button, it gives us some optional screens here. The first item there is the vehicle cue screen, and that's when we look to see um, how it's profiled in the vehicle in the tunnel. Equipment setup allows us to get into to set up the parameters that we have for our ultrasound, which is here. Ultrasound has some ultrasound settings that are fixed, non-changeable. We go back here, we'll go to our, our limits, and in here we set up our limits in inches of where the setting is, what we call our low limit and our high limit. Um, and that'll tell us what will detect the car in the wash process. Uh, we go back here and we've got our, our watch signal here and we've got our offsets for what is a truck bed and what isn't a truck bed and those items need to be set up. Um, the next item that we get is our encoder. The encoder is basically telling us that we can use the pulse resolution from the car wash controller and we can do that if we can get a pulse resolution at least every seven to eight inches. In a normal four pulse magnet system, that'll work fine. We can just transfer that pulse and just parallel it and bring it down here. If we can't get that pulse resolution and we're gonna run at one conveyor speed, we can run on simulated pulse. This one here today is being run on simulated pulse because we only have one magnet. We're gonna change that eventually. We're set up for one, for a simulated pulse. We've calculated our speed and our pulse resolution and we're at a setting at about 1.14 pulses per second and basically that's gonna help us determine where the equipment is and when do we want it to shut off. We'll go back. Um, detection, basically we have a detection point, and this is set up as number two. There's a couple things we can detect. If we didn't want to detect 
uh, just trucks, we would the truck beds, we would choose a different option. Okay. Um, the vehicle, in the vehicle setup, we want to put the length of the building, uh, the car wash tunnel, so we have a maximum pulse length that we should be tracking the vehicles through and counting cars. We have a minimum car length and a maximum car length. That we're there, we're not, we're not making a mistake that this is a car, not somebody walking through with a wheelbarrow, we don't know. So we set up these parameters. Uh, once we're done with those, we go back out to the box and we come to functions. And these functions here are how we set up each one. Function number one for us at this site happens to be the lava system. The lava is located four pulses from the photo eye. So we set that up as a, an item there. And then we want to turn it off for up to 12 pulses to make sure we keep it off for the length of a eight foot pickup truck bed. So we set that up as 12 pulses. We have a on delay and an off delay setting that are pretty much standard. Just a pause before we actually do an activity so we can measure and make sure we want to do it. And that's set up that way. If we press the right arrow, it'll take us right into function number two. It is set up in mode one. Again, we're detecting truck beds. This is 75 pulses away, happens to be our hot wax. We're doing the same 12 pulses in the same offset. The important thing about programming this, you must program them in order. So you have to do the, the first function down the tunnel, then the second, third, fourth. This location has to increase from one to six. If you have one that drops below, it won't work. You'll have to change the wiring and reprogram them so that they're sequentially getting uh, further away down the tunnel as you go through the cycle. Um, that's how you take care of all the functions. You'll follow that through for all six settings. We'll go back here to setup. Um, and here we have some test functions. Um, and here we can actually change from the auto mode to the manual mode. And then we can actually touch these and we can turn on and off. If we want to make sure we wired it correctly, if I actually activate the override for the lava, right now it wouldn't go on. If I cycle this off and on, then it'll go on and off. So I know that I've got my system wired correctly. It allows me to test that and troubleshoot it. We'll turn that off. I'll go back a minute and we'll go into the, the IO description. This here on the left side tells us we have a pulse signal from our controller if we're using that. It also tells us we have the conveyor on activated when the conveyor is running. These two lights should be lit up in order for this to be operational. If we do detect the, detect the truck, these are our six functions that we can stay here and watch to make sure in the tunnel that each one of them are coming on and they're programmed properly. So we can be looking at a pump that's running and then we'll say, okay, truck bed's here. If this light comes on, that pump goes off. It's easy to troubleshoot and see what's going on. We're gonna back this up a little bit. Um, the main screen that we like to leave it on when we're watching is this one here, which actually profiles vehicles. It will not profile a vehicle in the manual mode. Little button up here is manual. We touch it again, brings us back to automatic. We're ready to wash a car now. And we're basically gonna, gonna start profiling the height of the vehicle here, which is our sonar sensor. And the sonar sensor is kind of a self-teaching piece. There's a little bit of instructions how to touch some buttons. We mount it between 100 and 160 inches from the floor. It'll learn the level of the floor. We don't see the zero because we don't detect the car until we get to, to 12 inches off the floor and between 60 inches. And that's how we work it. But we'll start seeing some readings pop up. Down below, our pulse count will be on the right-hand side going as we count cars. Once it detects a truck, it'll say, it'll give us a yes for a truck. It'll give us the values there. And then we can change the screen and watch those other activities light up as they're going off and on for the truck as it passes down the tunnel. Okay? I'm gonna have the guys queue up a car, uh, an actual truck. We'll watch it here and we'll watch this uh, screen for a minute and you'll be able to see the, the lights change as it measures that vehicle and profiles it as a truck. Okay, let's get ready to wash the car. So right now we just uh, activated a vehicle. We got our truck going through. Call for our roller up. So we're pushing right up front now. We're gonna enter the photo eye and we're gonna start profiling the, the vehicle itself. On the bottom left of the screen, you can see the numbers change from 35, 50, 53, and that's actually measuring the height of the vehicle from the floor. As the vehicle goes through, we'll see a couple of drops as the sonar goes over the back of the vehicle. And we see the couple of drops here, 31 inches, we see that it is a drop. We see another drop down again to 31. And in a minute, when it gets done profiling, it'll give us a cue. Yes, it's a truck, and those are the settings. So we come here, we look at our I.O. display, 
That's our lava going off right there as function number one. So we just shut the lava off in the truck bed. As we go down the tunnel in about a minute, we're gonna actually fire function number two. And function number two will be our hot wax going off and not spraying in the back of the bed. And then it'll sequence through the gators on the air dryer. And then it'll also do the top brush at the end of the tunnel. And each one of those will flash when they're activated and opening up that circuit. There you go, so that's number two, that's hot wax going off. Uh, the first floor rod shutting off, second floor rod shutting off, and then third floor rod shutting off. And then last but not least, the top brush, once it wipes the roof, will retract up and stay out of the truck bed as well. Thank you for watching this maintenance overview video. Please visit sunnysdirect.com and review the complete owner's manual before attempting any installation, maintenance, or repair of this component. There you'll learn necessary procedures, settings, and other considerations required for the safe operation of your car wash equipment.